You want to know the three problem areas that can occur to destroy a baseball player's shoulder? Hi, my name is Jeff Larish and I'm the owner of the DRC and I'm going to break down the three problem areas that you have to watch for in the throwing motion. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, be sure to do so and hit the bell so you can be notified when we post videos. All right, so talking about the shoulder, you've really got to watch for three different things occurring in the throwing motion. You have to watch out for elevation, so this is where the shoulder comes up towards the ear. You have to watch out for internal rotation, okay, at the humerus, so the shoulder joint. And you have to watch out for anterior tilt, that's the shoulder coming forward. <clears throat> These three areas can be really problematic in putting added stress on the shoulder, and it's really unnecessary stress. The, the throwing motion is so stressful on the arm as it is, the last thing you want to do is put this unnecessary stress on it. So you got to watch in the throwing motion. When we watch pitchers or any baseball players throw, there's some things that are going wrong throughout their backswing to the throwing motion that can really start to harm them. And while they may not experience it right away, eventually over time, they're going to start to break down. And as they draw the ball out of the glove, a lot of these players will draw up into an M position with that elbow leading up. What this is doing, it's actually giving you all three of those problems. It's creating the elevation, the shoulder going up towards the ear, the internal rotation because now you have that ball or the hand dropped well below the elbow. The elbow's above the shoulder. And you also have the anterior tilt because it's hard to fight against just bringing that shoulder forward. In this position, as they draw up, not only are they taking the shoulder out of the joint, but you're starting to build up momentum once you drop this ball out of the shoulder. And as they draw up, their momentum has to stop because the only movement that they can make to get up into position is to then bring that ball back behind them up into position. So it's similar to starting up a car, sending it in reverse, stopping, and then going in forward again. So as you build up this momentum, you're stopping, you're having to change direction, and then go through. So it's really creating a big problem within the shoulder, which can then lead to the elbow. There's a lot of research showing that the shoulder is directly related to the elbow and vice versa. So as you guys are doing this, you've got to watch your throwing position and think that, think about once you drop this ball out of the glove, you're trying to build up momentum and keep that momentum going as you make your throw. <clears throat> to do that, think of this a lot like a circle. You're trying to drop that ball out of the glove and circle up into the throwing position so then from here, you can keep that momentum going into the release. Another big problem that can occur up once you get to the throwing motion when the stride foot lands is there's a lot of players that will point this ball back behind them or have the palm facing towards second base. This is extremely problematic because if I do not move my wrist at all and I start to bring my arm through, I am not facing in the direction that I want to be facing. I want my palm facing where I'm going to release that ball. And the only way to change this, if I'm pointing it back towards second base, the only way to do that is to start to rotate at the wrist. And if you start to rotate at the wrist, if you just sit there and start doing this, what you start to feel is there's a lot of stress in through the elbow. And again, that's, that's really, really problematic. It also doesn't allow you to get that snap on the ball to get the good backspin and rotation because now you're having to twist rather than letting that ball lay back and snap. So you wanna make sure as you drop into the throwing position when the stride foot lands, the palm or the ball should be facing where your chest is facing. Okay, if I'm a pitcher and I'm a right-handed pitcher, that ball or my palm should be face, facing the third base. If I'm a pitcher, a left-handed pitcher, the ball should be facing towards first base. This will allow you to let that ball lay back as you bring it through and get the good snap at release to get the backspin. Another thing you gotta watch for is letting this, your wrist get beyond your elbow, so outside of your elbow. This can cause added stress as you start to bring the ball through to release as well. 
<clears throat> you're trying to get, once your stride foot lands and you start to drive towards your target, you wanna make sure that this wrist is just inside the elbow. You also wanna make sure the elbow is just below the shoulder. As you get the elbow above the shoulder, it just puts more stress on the shoulder. And without going into too much anatomy, it's stressing out the muscles that you need to protect the shoulder as you go to release the baseball. So these are some big things you gotta watch for. Do some vid take some video and check your own throwing motion, kinda see where you're at. But you've gotta watch for and correct this. Um, keep an eye out for some more information that I'm gonna release of how you can actually change this if you are getting in some of these problem areas. Be sure to share this with other players, parents, and coaches. Comment below if you like this video and have the best day you've ever had.